My name is Brody. I'm the Provincial Communications Officer for the Distinguished Province of Worcestershire. And it's my job to host these monthly webinars of Freemasonry Conversation. And I should also add a couple of things. If you do have a question to our distinguished guest this evening, you, so you can submit those via the question and answer facility on Zoom. And also, if you'd like to register for our next Solomon Live, details will be available shortly in order for you to do that as well. So without any further ado, our Solomon Live this evening is meet the Assistant Grandmaster and joining us this evening, Sir David Wooten, Assistant Grandmaster and past Lord Mayor of London. David, how are you? I'm very well. Good evening, uh, Brody. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining and very good to talk to you this evening. It's great to have you here. Much excitement. So this is all about getting to know you a little bit more. So what I thought we could do, if, if it's OK with you, David, is break this down into segments because there's a lot to have a look at in the next 45 minutes. Now, if anybody knows you well or perhaps not so well, rowing is a big passion of yours. And I think it's fair to say that your, your Freemasonry journey started with rowing. Perhaps you could tell me about that. It did. Uh, I... Uh was born, brought up in Bradford, and I went to a school which was a rugby school and a cricket school. <clears throat> and uh, if uh, you didn't play either of those well, which I didn't, my coordination wasn't good enough, you had to look for another way of uh, excelling. And I was fortunate that the school had a rowing club. Uh, and I thought I could do that. So at age 15, I went down to the rain club and I discovered that I could. Uh, although you do it seated and you do it looking backwards, I thought it was a great sport to do. and kept me very fit and very occupied. Uh, and uh, in my last years at school, they made me captain of the boat club. Uh, they went on to university and I picked somewhere to go to university which was in addition to quite good at the academic side which I wanted to do uh, it was also quite good at rowing uh, and uh, my last year there they made me captain of the boat club and towards the end of my last term uh, the, the rowing coaches at university were uh, what we now call alumni old boys who, who'd been there countless years before and I thought they were very old and, and they worked in the city and other places and they came back uh, a week or two uh, a year to coach and one of them towards the end of my last term uh, whispered confidentially to me David are you going to be working in London yes I am <laughs> uh, well get in touch there's something you might be interested in well I did get in touch uh, and I was uh, invited for a cup of tea in one of the London clubs. I remember being asked whether I uh, believe in God. I said yes. Uh, I don't remember the word masonry, Freemasonry being mentioned, but I was told to turn up at a particular time, at a particular uh, date, dark suit, white shirt, rowing club tie, at uh, the Lloyd's Insurance building in the city, which is where the Lloyd, the, the lodge, as I discovered it was, met. Uh, I, I duly turned up, and as everybody else went in, they all said, good luck, David, because I didn't know what, <laughs> what was going to happen. And then when the blindfold came off, they were all my rowing coaches. Wow, that is fantastic. Uh, uh, and it was Argonauts Lodge, number 2243, a rowing lodge which does very well to this day and to this day throughout its existence you're you you are not asked to join unless you either have been or are an active rower so it was it was rowing that got me into masonry and i'm very pleased oh, with that's that. fantastic that's fantastic how much did you know about masonry before joining Argonauts? did you know an awful lot about it no my immediate family were not masons my uncle my father's brother uh, was uh, and I have a distinct memory um, going back to my teens, like early teens, uh, of visiting uncle and aunt and listening to aunt talk with great proud, great pride to my mother uh, uh, about her ladies' night, 
I've no idea what a ladies' night was. And her theme for the ladies' night, aunt's theme, was two shades of blue. Of course, I had no idea what the significance of that was. And I couldn't quite understand what the fuss was about, teenage boy. Why, why, why was I interested in these things? But I wasn't, wasn't impressed at all with two shades of blue. But I now understand, of course, uh, what, um, what, what the point was. Because Uncle was master of uh, Lodge, Lodge number 98, uh, in stoke on Trent, which I've visited uh, since uh, and is still going strong. Oh, fantastic stuff. So from joining Argonauts, and that was in 1975, wasn't it? Then the journey then took you to Chapter, but you didn't join the uh, the affiliated lodge with Argonauts. You, you went elsewhere, didn't you? Uh, yes, I, I was... Um, the normal thing was, was that you're asked to join Chapter once you've been through the chair in your craft lodge. But, but so, something was going on and a... The, the, there was a chapter into which most members of Argonauts went, uh, but a few of my rowing coaches thought I would be better placed somewhere else. So they they nabbed me early <laughs> while I was still a, a warden uh, a, and uh, invited me to join, which I did, Castle Chapter of Harmony number 26, of which I'm still a proud, a proud member, and I've obviously been through the chairs uh, there. Uh, I didn't know anything about chapter either before I, uh, before I was exalted, but of course I now do, and it's a great pleasure to be in both. Now we'll get back to um, Freemasonry, of course, in, uh, in the next few minutes. We've got so much to discuss, especially your, uh, your fantastic role within Freemasonry and what that involves. But let's talk about your, uh, your role as a lawyer, because there's so much to have a look at in the work that you do outside of Freemasonry. Let's talk about you being a lawyer and what it brought you into, into that direction. Uh, I was at university, like most students, I guess. I didn't really know what to do, and I decided, without any family background, uh, without really consulting anybody, that I wanted to be a lawyer. <clears throat> So when I said that my, uh, my brain coach asked me whether I was going to be working in London, by the time I got to the last year of university, I decided I wanted to be a lawyer. And I had a job as what was then called an article clerk, now called a trainee, with a firm of uh, solicitors from lawyers in, in the city, a uh, big firm. Uh, it was big then by then standards and is now very big Alan and Overy. Uh, uh, and I stayed there for, in fact, 42 years, man, man, man and boy, which, which is either uh, th that I was extremely happy there or I was <laughs> otherwise unemployable. Well, it was one of the two. And, um, and we, we must talk about your journey um, into the city as well. And for those who are not familiar, uh, your career in livery, uh, originally Fletcher, tell, tell us about that. Uh, I can blame masonry for that. Uh, <laughs> I was in, as I said, Castle Chapter of uh, Harmony number 26. The, the, uh, the companion one ahead of me as I went through the chairs uh, in uh, Chapter uh, was, I didn't know this at the time, a member of a city livery company. Although I worked in the city, I didn't really know what a livery company it was. I'd been in livery halls for meetings, but I didn't really know what, uh, what it was. One evening during the festive ball, uh, the, the companion uh, said, would I, would I like to come to the livery one evening? And I was confused. I thought livery, that's where John Wayne used to take his horse. And I, <laughs> well, I, I thought that I respected the... Uh, uh, the, 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 the companion, very distinguished man, uh, and I, the kind of person who, who is not going to give you a bad invitation. So I, I, I went along and it was an uh, interesting experience for me. Quite a few people there. It was what I now recognise as a reception. Lots of people. And it appeared that everybody wanted to talk to me, but not for very long. Towards the end of the evening, the companion who'd introduced me uh, came up to me and whispered confidentially in my ear, 
I think you've passed. Oh. And the penny then dropped that this was an elaborate form of interview as to my suitability to join uh, the, the livery company. It's called the Fletchers. Fletchers originally makers of arrows. Uh, Agincourt, uh, um, Henry V, was our finest hour. And we went out of business as a method of defence when somebody very unkindly invented the gun, which is very unsporting. But the Fletchers still exist. I joined. Uh, I uh, progressed. I made my way. I was asked to join the court, which is the governing body committee, uh, and was then uh, m m warden and then uh, 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 master. Uh, and during an evening uh, dinner at uh, the Fletchers, I found myself sitting opposite somebody who'd just been uh, elected as an alderman in the city, actually creating a, vi a vacancy in a, in a by-election. Uh, for his place on common council in the, uh, in the city, which is the, 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 the council, the local authority, uh, the city corporation of the city of London. Uh, his reading of that conversation was that I had shown interest. My reading was that I'd just been asking him questions. Uh, a few days later, phone rang, somebody else I'd not met before, uh, uh, said, well, Bob, the person I've been talking to, says you're interested uh, and interested in standing for election, which is something I'd never thought I'd do. But I thought, I don't really know what it is, give it a whirl. And of course, I was told, well, it'd be easy, you'll be unopposed with this vacant seat. Well, I wasn't unopposed. And while I was unopposed, I was fairly relaxed about it. Well, did I mind? The moment there's competition, the moment somebody else wanted it, some basic instinct takes over and you decide he's not having it. <laughs> so competitive instincts come out, I campaigned and I won. So that got me into the city corporation. There are two houses in the city corporation, keeping it simple, elected as a common, an ordinary councillor, and then three or so years later elected as an alderman, which opens up the path to being your mayor. It's fantastic, David. It's a, it's a world that many of us don't know about, and you, you've explained it oh, brilliantly. Oh, oh. So we've got to talk about uh, your time being Lord Mayor, because it's a big role, and it's got a, uh, I think it's fair to say, it's got a, a, a spotlight shining upon it. What, what was that like for you? Uh, I, when you take on things, you discover, uh, you, 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 sometimes you know, you know you can do it in advance. Most of the time you don't, but are willing to take a chance of finding out whether you, whether you can. Uh, and when I was a, a junior uh, alderman, I watched Lord Mayor. You have to be sheriff first for a year and then Lord Mayor. So I watched these people and I thought I could probably do this. Uh, of course, when you're, it's like moving into the chair of a lodge, it's completely different if you haven't done it before. Yes. You suddenly discover people are looking at you. Why are they looking at you? Because you're the worship of a master. Get on with it. And it's the same with being Lord Mayor. You're, you're front and centre. You're on the front row. You're speaking every... You're the centre of attention with others, not alone, on every single occasion. And you can either do that uh, or you can't. Uh, and you have to decide you're going to do it. And I discovered that I could. Uh, and when it goes well, you, you enjoy it. But it is, it is intense. It's several events a day. Wow. Definitely five, sometimes six, sometimes seven days a week for an intense uh, year. But it takes you into a world you would not ordinarily get to. Gov government ministers, home, uh, abroad, top business levels, uh, royal events. There's a great relationship between the monarchy. Uh, and, and the city of uh, uh, London, so that, for example, the Queen's Diamond Jubilee was that year when I was Lord Mayor, 2012, and the big national event was a service at St Paul's Cathedral, which the nation gave thanks to the monarch for uh, then uh, 60 uh, years, and there's going to be another one in June this year, national thanks for uh, 70 years. Uh, and because of history, 
the Lord Mayor greets the monarch at the entrance of St Paul's and everybody else has gone in because constitutionally in the city of London the Lord Mayor is sovereign in the city save only for the monarch herself. Greet the Queen, you know, then pick up a sword, the sword is a sign of authority, and lead the Queen down the nave of St Paul's. Uh, and uh, you, when you pick up this sword, you think, this is easy, this is light. Halfway down the nave, you discover, I'm glad I had all that training as a, as a rower, because otherwise my arms are going to uh, <laughs> give out. And of course, you can't turn round as you're leading the Queen uh, and say, am I going the right speed, ma'am? You, you, you have to work it out whether you're going the right, uh, uh, um, uh, right pace. Uh, and you're wearing an ermine robe, which is very heavy. Uh, and there's, there's protocols and manoeuvres you've got to go through. And the one thing you want to make sure you don't do is fall over. In this oh, no. YouTube, you do not want to be the Lord Mayor that fell over. No, no, not at all. That was a, a, a centre center, center piece. Uh, event. That evening, uh, my father asked me how it had felt. That's a question we all ask him. How did it feel? And I had to say, I had no idea. Because <laughs> you're concentrating so hard. As, as you do in Masonic ritual, our big Masonic ritual, you're concentrating so hard on getting it right that you have no, no recollection of it at all. Oh, I tell you what, though, I can't imagine what that was like for you. I don't think any of us will. Hence why we're, we're uh, hanging off your every word in the, and enjoying the conversation. Nice opportunity now, actually, to, uh, to uh, put a, a question to you, David. And this is from Robert Pynchon. And he says, which has been the more challenging and interesting journey? Your path towards becoming Lord Mayor uh, or achieving assistant grandmaster in UGLE? Uh, being becoming Lord Mayor is more challenging in one sense, in that you've got to fight elections got to be elected to the council you're going to be elected as sheriff and then elected as lord mayor and en route to those two being nominated by uh by by your uh um, your fellow councillors so so there are challenges of uh of uh, b being elected uh uh there's less to remember you don't have you don't have ritual uh, as you do in uh, uh, in masonry. Uh, you do, of course, want to uh, get things right, not in the manner of election, so people will vote for you, but because you want to get things right and do things do things well. So they're 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 different different challenges. When it goes right, equally e equally enjoyable. Uh, and there are quite a few cross skills uh, that, that there's a lot of uh, choreography, a lot of movement, a lot of similarity, though fewer words in city ritual, the city ceremonial, as there is in, um, in, in, in both. You've got to be able to walk straight and upright. Oh, fantastic answer and uh, thank you very much indeed for uh, submitting that you can uh, continue to do the same as well on our question and answer facility more questions coming to sir david in the next few minutes thank you, i thought we could get back to where to talking about freemasonry now not that we ever left it uh, it's it's clear isn't it uh talking to you for all of uh 20 minutes so far what you've achieved and there's plenty more of that to come but let's talk about your role as assistant grandmaster what was that like for you to be appointed? Oh, it was a, a, a surprise in the sense that I'd been a uh, Mason since 1975. Uh, I had been active in one lodge and one uh, chapter uh, for 20, 25 years, and I hadn't sought to do any more because I was uh, uh, working full-time lawyer and making a uh, lesser contribution, lesser than my wife, to, to bringing up a family. So I didn't want to do more uh, th than that. But, but as, as uh, uh, my legal career wound down, my city civic career uh, um, 
became more involved. I got more time to do more. Uh, and on being elected to the City Corporation, I was asked to join Guildhall Lodge, which is a lodge for elected members of the City Corporation. Uh, and that started to put me in touch with Grand uh, Lodge. Uh, uh, and each year, one of the rulers is the, uh, the installing officer of the installation. Uh, and the practice is in Guildhall Lodge that if the law mayor of the day is a Mason, he's offered the opportunity to be in the chair for that year. Ah. Which uh, I was, and uh, 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 and I uh, and I did, and because of those contacts, uh, I uh, and and because I was not going to be a lawyer significantly, uh, it uh, it um, you know you get a sense. Do you want to go in a particular direction? Yeah. And it was clear to me I wanted to go in the direction of doing more in uh, masonry, uh, and the timing was very fortunate. Uh, because the then assistant grandmaster, my very distinguished predecessor, David Williamson, uh, was w w wanted to to retire. He'd done eleven years, so there was the um, there was the opportunity. Uh, and having been a lawyer, and having been Lord Mayor, where you become and you discover whether you are a bit of a performer in the sense that you can do public events, you can do ceremonial. The, the ceremony, the public aspects of being assistant grandmaster uh, appeal to me. Uh, and if, if you're a, a councillor, not so much if you're a lawyer, but if you're a councillor, uh, particularly if you're a <clears throat> lawyer, you're, you're going to need to like people because it's, it's an outward facing, you don't sit in an office on your own as you frequently do as a lawyer. It's, it's, it's getting out and about amongst people and that's very much what I enjoy and I spotted that that's what I might be able to do and I have been able to do and getting out amongst fellow Masons wherever uh, uh, has, has, has been something that, uh, that I recognised and attracted me to it and has been very much something I've enjoyed. Oh, fantastic. That's brilliant and uh, I've got a little question to ask you a bit later about your role, but so we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. What I thought we could do is, uh, is get to another question. And this uh, this seems to tie in nicely to what you've uh, you've been talking about. How on earth do you manage your vast array of commitments? Because we have, we've only um, discussed a few of those and we're, go, we're going to talk about the role uh, of uh, Assistant Grandmaster in a, in a moment, but how do you manage to, to juggle all of that together? A combination, <laughs> getting up early, going to bed late, uh, and uh, filling in the time uh, in between. Uh, uh, you, you have to be uh, organised. I get great support uh, from, from Freemasons uh, Hall, from the Grand Secretary's Office. Uh, my diary manager uh, is my daughter, who, uh, my daughter Alex, who lives in Chicago and does a superb uh, job, uh, not least of organising me. <laughs> uh, every day late on she's in Chicago so she's got six hours oh, so uh, every, every evening was a conversation dad you will you will answer the following questions <laughs> are you going to this event or not I don't know, <laughs> or, or not so it's a combination of, of organization and actually wanting to do it uh, and uh, Something that I've noticed has changed over the last decade, uh, 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 and I pay tribute to the programme Master Peter Lounge, particularly for this. Uh, Grand Lodge has opened up um, a lot, uh, um, a, a, a lot more um, willingness to seek out and indeed um, enjoy publicity. Uh, a much more public uh, face uh, and the people in Grand Lodge, rulers and others, going out more. Uh, the, the, there was a little bit of a mystique where well, we better keep the rulers uh, away from people, uh, uh, otherwise the mystique might 
disappear. Well, we now look at life completely differently. Uh, uh, and getting out and about is very much what, what we do, and that is something particularly that I enjoy. Does your right require organization? Uh, it, it, it requires um, uh, an acceptance uh, that, that one is going to be out and about, but it's, but it's, um, uh, it's definitely worth doing. Well, you, you seem to be doing it um, very, very well. And uh, lots of people say, actually, uh, that uh, you've got the ability to get on people, or well, to get on with people at, at various levels. And that's important, isn't it? Uh, it is. I, I, I get that from uh, uh, my father, actually, who, as I say, was not a Mason, uh, but he came from a fairly gregarious family. And, and he, he, was, uh, he was a secondary school teacher. He started teaching secondary modern schools, if anybody remembers those, and then became the headmaster of a, a comprehensive school. And my mum taught in comprehensive schools. So he was dealing all the time with people of all all, uh, all kinds, and he was a very dedicated edu educationalist. Uh, and uh, I, I come from uh, a, uh, an ordinary part of Bradford, uh, a um, not 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 a not not a place that has the uh, the most exclusive of re reputations, but it's a great place. Uh, uh, so I start there. I then go to uh, university. I then get a job in in the city. Meanwhile, I'm in, my sport is rowing, which at that time much less now. Now it's very much a sport for everybody. But then it was much, very much, the wealthy man's, hardly any women, lots of women now, but very much a wealthy person's sport. So that, that having come from an ordinary, if you like, grammar school background, rowing took me into contact with, with those fortunate to be at independent schools. So on my way through, and of course, including that my, my, uh, time as a lawyer, I was a corporate lawyer, so I'm dealing with people running companies in the UK, in, internationally, so all the way through I'm dealing with a wide range of people and I find uh, people very interesting. The vast majority of people I've dealt with have been trying hard to do something, whether it's a job or some other voluntary activity. The vast majority absolutely in good faith. Uh, that is particularly attractive to me about masonry because again you'll have the odd one who isn't but the vast majority are spectacularly trying hard to do something that's good and in absolute good faith absolutely all, on all levels whether it's something big something small i hugely respect and i hugely enjoy watching and contributing to that Oh, abs absolutely now uh, if it's okay david can we talk about your role as assistant grandmaster and what that involves, because um, we've obviously had a, a conversation, you and I, before um, tonight, Solomon and I, and I was quite surprised how much that role involves. Can you, can you break that down for us a little bit? Yep, I'm, uh, part of it is being part of the team, uh, and the, the team uh, starts at the top, the, the Grandmaster, and then there's the Programme Master, uh, Peter Lanz, who's also the, uh, Pro first principal, first program principal, uh, and in the craft, deputy grandmaster, uh, Donald Spence, and the assistant uh, grandmaster. And on the craft side, uh, we do between us the big events. We do the installations of provincial grandmasters in the last month. Uh, I've been to Harrogate, installing the new provincial grandmaster and the grand superintendent of Yorkshire West Riding uh, and to uh, James Newman and to uh, Blackburn to do the same uh, in uh, East Lancashire, Robert Frankel. In a couple of weeks time, I'm going to Worcester. No, I'm going to Birmingham, beg your pardon, going to, to do the, to install the new provincial grandmaster of uh, Worcestershire. Uh, so there's that kind of thing. There are bicentenaries of lodges. Uh, that, that the rulers do, as I say, we share them out between 
Uh, so there's of a certain other ceremonial type events that we uh, do. Uh, we, we also uh, um, rec make recommendations to the Grand Master for senior uh, uh, appointments. Uh, and we work actively with the Board of General Purposes, President Jeffrey, uh, um, uh, doing and the other members of the board on the administrative side. So there's, there's quite a lot of meeting based work and there's quite a lot of ceremonial work. And in both of those, the, uh, the assistant grand master is number three, um, um, pro deputy uh, assistant grand um, a member of the team. There are certain things that uh, come on to the desk, as it were, the assistant grandmaster alone. The, the provinces and districts, the districts of the areas uh, outside England and Wales, where there are enough uh, lodges to, to have a, a district grandmaster proper, uh, the, the, the same management structure, same leadership structure as in England and Wales, the, the provinces. Where there aren't um, uh, enough lodges in particular uh, uh, places, response of that goes to the assistant grand master. And there are either groups where there are fewer than five lodges, and there are four groups, Malta, Canada, it's called Montreal and Halifax, Portugal, uh, and Southwest Pacific, Fiji. And there are these things you mentioned called NUDs, not under districts or, or, or Grand Inspector, which is a uh, group, which is Singleton uh, Lodges, where there's just one uh, in a particular place. Could be Vanuatu, uh, could be the island of uh, Rabaul in the Pacific, could be Curaçao uh, uh, in, in uh, the Dutch Antilles in the Caribbean, could be Valparaiso in uh, Chile. And of course, what you will uh, uh, spot uh, is that most of these that I just mentioned are, are in uh, terribly undesirable places. There's not a beach to be seen. Uh, and, and, you know, Brody, somebody has to do it. Somebody has to go and uh, visit these places because actually the English constitution lodges, there's one called Star of the East in the island of Zakynthos uh, uh, near Corfu. The, the one I haven't got to yet is St Helena in the South Atlantic. So that's, um, that's still on my bucket list, uh, as it were. But the point of that is you have English constitution lodges in small numbers scattered around the world, often in places, and Fiji is one, where the authorities or the church are not supportive and where actually it's not easy to be a Mason and a key part of our job is supporting them so they feel um, part of uh, Freemasonry. And as you know, there are good things about the pandemic. And one thing what, what was Zoom calls with all the people I've been talking about. All, all, we did all the groups and most of the, uh, uh, we did all the groups, all the districts, most of the singletons uh, uh, and morale was astonishingly astonishingly high so so the the, the, the smaller groupings abroad uh, the, I'm uh, president of the university's scheme which was founded uh, in the time of Lord Northampton when he was program master it was founded by my predecessor as assistant grand master David Williamson uh, and we've now got close to a hundred lodges uh, and I think seven chapters uh, in, in the scheme. And we have a conference every uh, couple of uh, years. And we had one in Bristol in March. 220 people came, fantastic day. A president of the Federation of School uh, uh, Lodges, a large collection of lodges that are connected in some way to, to a uh, school. Uh, I'm the, uh, the DC of Bradfordian's Lodge, which is connected with and meets at the school I was at uh, in, uh, in Bradford. I've also had a, a role in 
what I'm going to call the development of strategy. The first time, another good thing uh, about recent times is an innovation in Mason, the development of strategy. Uh, and in the middle of the, around right about 2015, first strategy um, um, was, was promulgated. Uh, and it involved various things which have become Solomon, become the members uh, pathway, uh, other work on membership, various work on the maintenance uh, and development of Masonic halls. Uh, uh, and I led a group called the Improvement Delivery Group, because strategy is no good unless you deliver it. And it's what you're supposed to be delivering pursuant to the strategy is improvement. So we called it the improvement delivery delivery group, very clever, called the IDG. Now all that work has been folded into the membership working party, which ah. the board chairs, uh, and is now in the, the main management structure coming up through the board of general purposes to to uh, to the rulers. So I think I think, so if you, now, I think people will be very ordinary. surprised that you do all of that, David. I think I think uh, that will uh, surprise a lot of people. We started off with your with the uh, the ceremonial side of the position, and uh, and of course it branches off in all sorts of different directions, doesn't it? Uh, back to the questions, and um, this is from Alexandra, and uh, Alexandra would like to say, uh, looking back at your Masonic career, what is the most important piece of advice or guidance? You would have liked to have received at the beginning. I would have liked to have received. Them. Yes, that's a good one, isn't it? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, I think um, I would have liked to have been more aware, and I'm going to be careful with my words, <laughs> but because it's something I'm about to say, more aware of of the uh, of the opportunities to do more in masonry than just be a member of the lodge. Yes. And the, the reason I'm being cautious it, it is that the, the, there's a, there's, if you are made aware of all those opportunities, you've got to be careful, particularly early on, not to take on too many of them. Yes. So in a way I was very, uh, Fortunately and unfortunately, way in in the uh, in my mother lodge, the the Argonauts, uh, there the, <clears throat> there was um, a very distinguished mason uh, who was a, a a a grand officer. Did the lodge have anything to do with other lodges? No. Did it have anything really actively to do with grand lodge? No. Uh, so when I got involved in Grand Lodge and wider basically it all came really as a bit of a surprise. So more advice about how the particular lodge fits in to the overall structure uh, and, and the, the opportunities, whether in the lodge, whether in the local community or otherwise, I, I would have benefited from that. But at the same time, I would have benefited the advice um, uh, not to take on uh, too much, because fam family comes first, job comes second, masonry comes third, and one just needs to get it all in the right order. Indeed, what a great question! Thank you, Alexandra, and uh, thank, thank you, David, for uh, for answering that. So uh, we've 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 got just a few minutes left. I can't believe how quickly this has gone. So let's talk about some of the things you're very excited about. Um, some new initiatives in UGLE and how they will impact on our future. Because you're involved in all of those. Uh, we are going to uh, hear in coming weeks uh, from. The uh, current deputy uh, grandmaster is heading up what's called a strategy group. So we've had the strategy since 2015, and you need to renew it, and we're renewing it now. Uh, and that's going to be launched as in coming uh, weeks, initially within Grand Lodge, and then to be disseminated. Uh, which will be—I know what it is—but but the deputy grandmaster will tell everybody. <laughs> 
uh, and it, and it's very um, it's very exciting because because what it is directed to is is uh, making masonry more open and therefore more attractive, more relevant. So it will do more in the community, but it will also lead to a better uh, Masonic journey um, for everybody with, within it. So, it, so it's, uh, if, if you were to go back into history beyond the last 10 years, and if you wanted to find a fault, we've been too inward looking, and now we now to be, to be much more outward looking. And the exciting thing is that's exactly the direction. Where, where, where going in. And you can also expect uh, Grand Lodge to, to, to get out and about more, which we're a, uh, we're a membership uh, organization. I did use that phrase in a speech once uh, at a festive ball. We're a membership organization and we, the, 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 the senior figures, um, whether in provinces, district or Grand Lodge, need to get out and with the members. I very, um, very uh, keen on that, um, uh, and we'll see a lot more about that. The next speaker uh, didn't see the phrase quite as I did. It, it, we're, we're not a membership organisation. <laughs> the AA is a membership <laughs> organisation, and of course he 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 was right, but but in a completely different way. We're a membership organisation, which is run by the members. Uh, and all the activity is by the members. It, it, it doesn't have a full-time executive. It, it does, but it's more, but it's it's not it's it's not uh, like the AA where where the the, the, the full timers are serving the members and the members do nothing other than drive their cars. We're completely different. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, that that point that at all levels, whether you're at Grand Lodge or or, or uh, lodge level, wherever around the world, the fact that we're one membership uh, and we enjoy each other's company at whatever level, that point will come. Will will come to the fore much more, as you will see. Oh, exciting times ahead, David. Exciting times ahead. Now, well, this next question is uh, our penultimate question, and this could uh, end a um, a Masonic career right now, and. Um, I've got to ask you, because lots of people would love me to ask you, what's going to happen to your role when Jonathan Spence becomes our new programme master? Uh, Peter Lowndes has been uh, programme master for 13 years, but it'll be 14 by the time he uh, steps down in September. Uh, and he's done a fantastic uh, job. The, 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 uh, the ability Peter has brought is, is to... to uh, encourage and allow other people to develop the initiatives, the openness, uh, the, 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 the better management, um, things that have become Solomon and the pathway. Uh, he, he's encouraged that. He's done an excellent job. Jonathan, uh, has come, he, he's, if you like, the strategic thinker, as I say, uh, and uh, um, will we'll continue Peter's work. And, uh, I'm absolutely certain we'll do a wonderful uh, job. Uh, I will want to make whatever contribution uh, I can and I'm asked to, to do. It is uh, uh, not for me to say what happens to me, but I, I shall uh, hope to play my part to the maximum extent. Uh, and um, uh, you will have to wait and see uh, what happens, but announcements will follow. Oh, well, listen, thank you for answering that. And uh, we should look forward to, uh, to seeing where your Freemasonry journey continues. One more thing, uh, David, uh, there's much excitement in my province in Worcestershire because you're coming to see us on uh, a couple of occasions in the next few months. The regatta, which is perfect. And of course, uh, you will be at our installation of our 17th PGM, Stephen Ware. Do you enjoy getting out and, uh, and, and traveling around the country and getting involved in different provinces? Yes. Uh, I, I um, have always had a liking for travel. Uh, I've always had a liking for maps, going uh, go, going to uh, uh, places. Uh, I now have through Mason the opportunity, not just to travel, but to travel with a purpose to go and 
uh, see Masons in particular, to talk to people about what's going on in, in their area. Uh, I find that very interesting. There's, there's a role we have, and that is support and encouragement and to tell people that, that, that what they're doing is noticed uh, and uh, 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 valued. Uh, and uh, the two events that you mentioned um, encapsulate, if you like, either end uh, <laughs> of the AGM uh, spectrum, uh, which, which is in the University of Birmingham on the 14th of March, uh, Craft PGM installation, which will be a great party, and then on uh, a date in the middle of uh, July, a Masonic regatta on the River Seven at uh, Worcester, a fabulous uh, uh, piece of uh, water. Uh, I was persuaded uh, probably about three years ago uh, by uh, Robert Vaughan, current PGM, uh, to take part. Uh, and my wife thought that my rowing at uh, in, in my state of, uh, she saw it, fitness and health and age, uh, was not very good for me. So she uh, drove me to Worcester with the hope of uh, restraining my participation. <laughs> Completely failed because uh, we, we won, I was part of the crew for, we won the first race, at which point all those competitiveness urges uh, came out again. And it was a wonderful day. Uh, and if anybody is anywhere near Worcester or has rowing uh, instincts, that is a day in which to participate. Because oh. that's, that, that's not Masonic ritual, but it's masonry involved in the community and they're having a lot of fun doing it. So I'm very much looking forward to both. And we, we can't wait to, to host you, sir. So David Watson, did you enjoy your experience on Solomon Live? Yes, thank you very much. It was absolutely fantastic. Thank you uh, for joining us. Absolutely brilliant. We could have carried on talking, of course. So many more questions to ask. And thank you very much indeed for submitting those questions. Uh, the next Solomon Live will be on Tuesday, the 17th of May, and will feature UGLE Worldwide, a view from the districts. We'll meet the District Grand Master of Cyprus. He will share his insights into UGLE districts and tell us about the customs and traditions of Freemasonry in Cyprus. You can sign up for that right now if you would like to join us. So that's 7.30 Tuesday, as you can see, the 17th of May. And if you haven't done so already, you can do that right now as well. Make sure you register for Solomon. Solomon.ugle.org.uk is uh, where you will find that fully useful and fantastic content for your daily advancement in Masonic knowledge. Thank you very much indeed for joining me this evening. Until our next meeting, I shall see you very soon. Take care.